Hello. Hello, hello. Can you hear me? I see no comment, so I don't know if you can hear me or not. Uh, Bonsoir, Lynn. All good? Hmm. Uh, so, hello, Tish. Loud and clear. Okay. It's a no device connecting, so I don't know if you can hear me. Hello, Connie. I saw just your pictures on Facebook. Okay, good. So if you can see me well, that's perfect. Cool, Sandy. So my dear friends, today we're going to do something. Hello, Nathalie. Which is, uh, how can I say, a bit risky, but I want to launch. I, since I was doing the tour on Hego, on, on Beams, I always wanted to, to redo some uh, trial. Good. <laughs> always trying to, to redo some trial and to give my um, own vision of this uh, trial. So for that, I thought I'm going to, to start. And I start today with one of my favorite things, my favorite subject. Let me see that I need a pencil and I see that this one is not working. Let me find another one. Okay. Uh, yes, like I did for Marie Antoinette, but I want to make it a little bit different. Um, and uh, so because Marie Antoinette, I did in the street. And so this one I want to do in um, at home. Uh, so today I did one which is about uh, Mary of Medici. Yeah. And uh, I was ambitious first, you know, I wanted to be few people. Some people are going to be the prosecutor. Some will be the lawyer. Well, I think it's a bit too much for what I can do. Hello, Agatha. So I'm going to try to make it a little bit different. And I'm trying tonight. Maybe it's not going to be perfect. Okay. They are all guilty. <laughs> Okay, Suzanne, <laughs> it's done. So I don't need to do the tour anymore. Suzanne decided they are all guilty. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> so I uh, don't want to judge Suzanne at my trail. <laughs> no, 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 Suzanne is guilty, very terrible. I've got an echo myself. Uh, I don't know if you hear me through the mic or if the mic is useless. I don't know. <laughs> So uh, let me see, maybe if I take out the mic. I, are you still hearing me clearly? I'm not sure the mic was working, so I thought maybe it's uh, no point that I use the mic. So, uh, I, you can't add, add me here now, so, so it's going to have to put back the mic. <laughs> <laughs> so it's because with one hand <laughs> I have to do some extra exercise. Okay. So better like that? Okay, better with the mic. Okay, perfect. It's just because I was reacting it. Much better. Okay. Okay, so let's start. And uh, so, you know, it's going to be the first one, so maybe it needs a little bit of um, readjustment. And maybe I will redo it another time with more um, more stuff, but um, we're going to try to, to do it. Okay, so I'm going to turn my camera. Here it is. So I asked Connie, who is with us tonight. <laughs> Pleasure. And so that sentence is from Connie. Okay, so if you disagree with that sentence, you have to say it with, to Connie, which is an, which is with us tonight. So the idea is I call the defendant to the witness stand. Okay, so I want to be the prosecutor. So I want to call the defendant <laughs> to the witness stand, and me the prosecutor. I'm going to mm, let's say uh, try to judge, 
and you are going not to judge. I'm just going to myself make the prosecution on you worse. What is worse? What is worse, uh, Connie? The sound is worse or something worse on the, uh, uh, what is worse? Sound is good or not? Uh, let tell me because I need to work. I need to start. <laughs> Sound is good. Okay, perfect. Let's go. So, uh, so I call the I call the defendant to the witness stand. This is the sentence of Connie. So, <clears throat> I hope it's good. And <laughs> Connie, if it's not good, you know you will be you will you will be in the witness stand. So who today we call to the witness stand? We're going to call Mary of Medici. Mary of Medici. Wow, that's an important lady, okay? Because she's a queen of France. So as a good trial, first, I think I need to tell you, show you the casting, okay? So who are we going to speak about? Like a, for a movie. Of course, first, we're going to speak about Mary de Medici herself. So this is, may I just try to be like that? Okay. So we're going to speak about Mary of Medici, her. We're also going to speak about another lady, but she's going to be uh, very important too, because uh, <laughs> she's one to be one, the one who is going to be maybe murdered or not. You will decide. She's named Gabrielle Destré. We'll speak about her later. Of course, we need to speak about that lady. Because that lady, she's Marguerite de Valois. She was the Queen of France before Marie de Medici. Ah, okay, Connie. Oh, that one doesn't look very nice. She's an Italian lady. She's called Leonora Dori. We will see who she is too. That one, oh, she looks so sweet, so nice. Look at her. Oh, that's such a nice face. Yes, she's very young. She's Charlotte de Montmorency. And the last one, she's the Marquise of Verneuil. So you see, already we've got six ladies in our casting for this fabulous show. <laughs> six ladies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, they all look the same because they are there. They are, uh, we are in the in the 16th centuries, no? So they all have got the same style, <laughs> same hairstyle, same closer you know it's uh it's normal uh, i mean i don't know who you, you see so it's mary of medici gabriel destre queen margot hi catherine leonora dori charlotte of Montmorency, marquis of verneuil <laughs> drama between the six ladies okay but if we've got six ladies we also have got six men so the first one of course is the king Henry the Fourth. Mm, he's going to be also murdered in that pro, in that trail. Then we've got that one. He's named the Duke of Epernon. Ah, the Duke of Epernon. He's going to play an important role, but what a little bit. Okay. Then we've got the murderer, François Ravaillac. Look, he has got he has got the knife in the hand. Okay, he's the murderer. Then we've got a pope. Ah, uh, we always need a good Pope. If we want to make a good movie, we need a good Pope. Then we've got, oh, that looks a little, hello, Laurie. That took a little bit uh, fatty old man. He's known Rodolphe the Second. And finally, this young, handsome boy, his name, Henry of Condé. Oh, there's a lot of Henry at that time. So this is our sixth man and our six ladies. All of them uh, look good, Pope. Yeah, well, mm, we shall see that. All of them have got somewhere an interest or somewhere a role to play in our story of tonight. <laughs> yes, it's like a game of Clue. <laughs> Absolutely. So who was in the room with <laughs> Marguerite de Valois having a hammer in hand the 25th of August, 15? 78. <laughs> it's a bit like that. <laughs> so, let's give a little bit of context to understand 
why what what we are speaking about so the context first before henry the fourth we have got henry the second henry the second is the one right here in the middle okay and with his wife his wife she's named catherine of medici so she's already a medici but the same family but no direct connection with mary of medici where there is something like seven different uh line in between both of them they have got their parents parents of uh, henry the second so the father of henry the second he's a famous francois the first you know the one who brought to france leonardo da vinci and mona lisa that he took from the medici okay that's a kind of a, kind of a terrible things that all together are going to do something like that and then that the kids four of these kids are going to be important so since 1562 france is suffering of the war of religion between the catholic and the protestant the last brother of Henry III, who is the son of Henry II, named François, means there is no more heirs for the king of France, because none of the child of Henry II had a boy. Oh, it's going to be the end of the dynasty. The last hope is the daughter. Okay. And the last hope of the daughter is Marguerite de Valois. But Henry III at that time is not very happy to have to push in the front Henry de Navarre. Henry de Navarre, it's him. He's the husband of horror. Who is horror? Oh, yeah, the war for religion, yes. He's the husband of Marguerite de Valois. He's not king. Marguerite de Valois, she's not queen. Okay? The king, it's him, Henry III. But Henry III is going to be pshuf, pshuf, murder. So the, the person which is directly in line to be the king of France is not anymore a Valois. It's Henry de Navarre, the husband of the sister of the king. But that guy, he's a protestant mm, that's terrible you know we can't have a protestant which is going to lead france so before he becomes a protestant he's going to change his religion and he's going to become a catholic so like that he can marry marguerite de valois but you see as is a protestant and as marguerite de valois she's a Catholic princess. They are going to make the marriage, but they are not going to be together during the marriage. Meaning, Marguerite de Valois, she's going to be inside the cathedral of Notre Dame, but Henry de Navarre, who is here with the blue, he's going to stay outside of the cathedral. And that was correct at that time. You know, you can marry somebody if the person is not next to him it's possible so henry de navarre couldn't enter the cathedral be because he was protestant and marguerite de valois needed to be in the ca in the cathedral because she was catholic <laughs> so you see it's already quite complicated that's that story so finally after that he's going to become catholic but at that time it's not the case okay and there is many, many, many Protestant, noble Protestant who came to the marriage. And this is going to, to be the terrible Saint Barthélemy. The Saint Barthélemy, it's going to be the massacre of the Protestant by the Catholic. The King Henry III, he's going to be injured by Protestant. The Catholic are going to take that excuse to slaughter all the Protestants they find in Paris. We say that at that time, 
there is something like 10,000 Protestants which are going to be killed inside the capital during this terrible night on the days after that of the Barthélemy, the slaughter of the Saint Barthélemy. Henry IV is Protestant. I mean, Henry de Navarre, he's Protestant. But being a prince of blood, he's not going to be killed because he's prince of blood of France. Finally, in 1589, he's going to become king of France. And becoming king of France, he's going to try to pacify, to peace, I mean to make the peace between Protestant and Catholic. But the civil war is not only between Protestant and Catholic, because a lot of Catholic don't trust that king who was Protestant, who become Catholic, just by pure interest. So there is a war in between Catholic and the king and then there is a war in between the king and the Protestants and there is a war in between the Catholic which are not with the king and the Protestants which are not with the king. So you know it's very very complicated. But finally, finally that king is going to succeed to reconquer his kingdom and to make the peace with Spain and also with all the different faction in France. And he's going to do something very important for the Protestant. He's going to sign what we call the Edit de Nantes, which recognized to the Protestant the capacities of doing their service and their mess as they want. That, of course, is not going to be very mm, happy for the Catholic because they don't see uh, in a good way, that that king, who is now supposed to be Catholic, is giving some privilege to their old enemy, the Protestant. So you see, the situation is very, very, very complicated. I think they actually had a representative to do the vote, but yeah, 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 absolutely, they have got something to 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 be on behalf of them. Okay. Also, uh, Henry the Second has got a nickname. His name, Le Vert Galant. Why le vert galant? Vert means green, and galant means to be gallant. But in that sense, vert doesn't mean green, but it means the worms. What the worms? Well, in that sense, the worms represent uh, the manhood <laughs> of Henry IV. And so we say he has got a kind of a uh, very, very gallant manhood, meaning by that, <laughs> he likes a lot the woman and he has going to have got lot of lot of lot of mistress okay ah uh, okay interesting for that susan thank you so let's see a little bit now we know the context let's see a little bit the main protagonist the main protagonist of this trio i need to introduce them to you because a part of that you are not going to understand so first Mary of Medici. So Mary of Medici, she born the 26th of April 1575 in Florence in Italy. She's going to die the 3rd of July 1642 in Florence in Italy. And she's going to die at the age of 67 years old. She born in and she lived her childhood in the Palazzo Pitti in Florence. And she's going to be a quite a lonely this is a this is a coat of arm of the Medici family. And Mary, she's a young girl here, she's going to be a quite a lonely uh, child. You know, she doesn't have many child to play with her. She's going to have a lady who is going to be a lady, a kind of young girl who is going to be with her. The one we saw before, you remember? We spoke about her, the Italian lady, Leonora Dori. This Leonora Dori, she's going to be the confidant of uh, Mary of Medici, which is going to be later on the Queen of France. So, when she's going to become Queen of France with her marriage with Henry IV, it's not at all 
to have an idea of any any love in that okay because for the king of france it's more to be able to have some financial reason because the crown of france owned lots of money to the medici family in italy they own them more than two millions of pounds i mean the pounds it's the, the currency in france at that time and which is 600 of a golden uh, coins it's a huge amount of money moreover henry you know has he was a little bit arriving there because nobody more from the valois were there he's quite happy to marry a princess which is coming from the family of uh, ferdinand the first which was the German Empire. So, you know, it's also a kind of legitimacy for him. So he does that for political reason or for financial reason. That's why the French people are going to call Mary of Medici the big banker, <laughs> you know, the bank woman, because she brought money to France. But she's going to do the job because she's going to give six kids to uh, Henry the Fourth. So that, when they are going to be officially married, this is fake because you know they were not together, <laughs> as I said. But that's a representation to make them nice. And you see here, it's Mary with who do you think it is? Who do you think is that baby? Have you got any idea? Look at that baby. Tell me who you think that baby is. Yes, Joan, absolutely. It's a boy, you see, because at that time, the boy were wearing, when they were young kids, a dress like a girl. So in fact, this is a boy. His name, Louis, it's going to be the future Louis XIII. So this is the first kid that Mary here is going to give to the king of France. One of the Louis, yes, Louis XIII. Okay. And uh, when she's going to be a widow, she's going to have the regency of the crown of France. And then after that, she will leave France and she will die gently at the age of 67 years old. So that her, my friends, that I called today to the witness stand and you are going to see why. The other person, oh yes, that's him. The other person which is important, he's the king of France. So the king of France, Henry IV, born the 3rd of December 1553 in Pau southwest of france and he died murdered the 14th of may 1610 paris france so he was 57 years old when he died you know that king even though he has been baptized as a catholic he received an education of protestant from his mother and he's always going to go from protestant to catholic he's going to change his religion six times during his life some people name it le bon roi okay because he was a king who loved to be close from his people but in fact uh, the french didn't like him for the fact that he was always changing the religion also, as I said, he was nicknamed the Vergalant. You see the Vergalant? Because he met that bridge, you know, the Pont Neuf in Paris, the beautiful bridge in Paris. But you know, on that bridge here, we have got a lot of little things. We named it the Mascaron. Six times, yes. And you see these Mascaron, which are all over the bridge. The rumor, the legend said that when the king met the bridge, he put the head of all the people that he had their wife for mistresses. 
and there is more than 80 mascarons because we think that that king has more than 80 mistress in his life. He's going to be murdered. Next person, she born, we don't know when, but she born in 1573 in Coeuvre, which is in the north of France, and she died the 10th of April 1599 in Paris. She's named Gabrielle Destré. Gabrielle Destré, so as I said, born in that castle. It's a beautiful castle in the north of France where she was living with her family. The king of France is going to see her in the castle and he's going to take her with him and she's going to be the official mistress for a very long time. You see, this is a very, very famous painting where we see Gabrielle Destré. What do we see on that painting? Very interesting. What do we see on that painting? Here we see somebody who is a, a maid. Here we see a little ven vedula to see something on the back, like uh, the Italian Renaissance painting. Here, we've got the sister of Gabrielle Destré. Both of them are in the bath. And you see here, she's holding the ring of the king. It means the king recognize her as its official mistress. On her sister, she's pinching the nipples of Gabriel Destré to show and to express the fact she is pregnant. In fact, she's going to give to the king before Mary of Medici, because at that time the king was married to Marguerite de Valois, you remember, the Queen of France, but the Queen of France couldn't give him any kid. So due to that, he's going to recognize that first king, that first boy that she's going to give him, Caesar. In fact, she's going to give him three kids when she had none with his official wife. And you see that painting represents something very important because it represents on one hand the fact she's pregnant, on the other hand the fact that the king recognized her as an official mistress. Gabrielle Destre, she is 50, 26 years old when she's going to die. So she's a young lady and she is at that time the ideal, the perfection of the beauty. Okay. And what is funny that so she's going to become the mistress of Henry IV and you know the mother of Gabrielle, she was the mistress of Henry III. Oh, uh, it's a painter from the... Um, uh, I have to tell you, it's called uh, Fouet. Uh, we call it the, a painter from the school of Fontainebleau. Um, I will tell you after the uh, the name. But she's not like um, by the French people. And the French people have got for her a nickname. She says she's the, she's the Duchesse of Garbages. You know, that's not very nice. When Marguerite of Valois is going to divorce the King of France, she said about her, she's a whore. So you see, not very nice either. But the 23rd of February, 1599, during a feast in the Palace of the Louvre, the King said to everybody, I am going to marry Gabrielle. And he gave her his ring. Wow! the king officially announced that Gabrielle is going to be the future queen of France. He's going to marry his mistress, which is quite important. But she's going to die a couple of weeks before the marriage. Mm, we shall see that later. And you see here the king discovering the dead body. This is pure fiction because the king never saw the dead body. And so she died. We will see of what. Let's carry on. Our first person and last that I want to introduce is Ravaillac. Ravaillac is born in Angoulême, 1577. But we don't know when exactly. Angoulême, we see where it is. He died the 27th of May, 1610, in Paris. 
So you see, he born in Angoulême. Angoulême is in the southwest of France, center of the southwest of France. This is the city of Angoulême. And Ravaillac is going to be the man who is going to kill with his knife Henry the Fourth. We think that Ravaillac is a bit mad, okay? But is it an excuse? We are not really sure about that. Ravaillac is going to kill the, the king of France the day before Easter. Why Ravaillac is going to kill the king of France? The king of France? Because Ravaillac think that the king of France is not a good Christian. So due to that, he thinks that the king of France is going to attack the army of the Pope. So he's a kind of a huge heretic. He needs to kill the king of France like he received the order from God. You see, he's got kind of an illusion in his head and he's sure that he has to do something. But after his murder, he's going to be condemned to death and he's going to be condemned to be split apart, hold by four horses, and then you see there is a borough who are going to cut him in pieces. You know, he's going to be tortured, he's going to suffer for hours, and after that, the crowd is going to destroy the rest of the body. He's not going to be buried in any cemetery. His body is going to disappear. Welcome to France at that time. So now, we've got our four people. We've got the context. We know everything's happened. So now, let's say about the fact. The fact from a historical perspective. Gabriel Destré, who is pregnant of the fourth kid of Henry IV, the night before she died, I mean, the 7th of April, she is going to have a dinner with a banker named Sébastien Zamet. That's the banker. And that's Gabrielle Destré. She's going to eat in Sébastien Zamet place. Then she's going to come back home and she's going to be suddenly taken by huge uh, convulsion. And these convulsions are going to bring her to the death. So what is going to have? This is what the people are going to call an eclampsy. It's an illness that a pregnant woman can have. So she's going to have got a big headache. She's going to have got trouble to view. They are going to have got the ears which are whistling. She's going to have got an hypertension. She's going to vomit. She is going to have feel sick. She is going to have got a lack of protein. She is going to have got the legs, the feet and the face, which are going to be more and more fat. And she is going to suffocate. We say that she is going to die in awful, terrible uh, suffer. And she's so much that once a priest thinks maybe she needs to be exorcised because maybe the evil come to her. But finally, we know, no, no, it's not that. But the face is so dark, you know, she's like a, a complete dark face after that because she can't breathe, that they don't want even to show the dead body to uh, the king. So, what the people who make the inquiry decide? She died from natural causes, by the eclampsy. End of the story. Let's go to the second story. The King Henry IV, that night, go to see the Duke of Sully. The Duke of Sully, he's in his office of the Pavillon de l'Arsenal in Paris. The king is going to leave the Louvre, go by the street of Montabor, pass by the Fontaine des Innocents, which is by the Halles, 
and then carrying his way to go to the arsenal. He's in his carriage. All good. Something like 20 minutes by carriage to go from here, from here. But here at the Fontaine of the Innocent, he's going to pass by a street, Rue de la Ferronnerie. He's going to take that street. And in the middle of the street, there is going to be, have got a carriage of haze, which is blocking the street. So due to that, the people of the of the, the soldiers with the king are going to go out of the carriage to take out that. And that's quite funny because this is right in front of a cafe which is named Le Coeur Couronné, the heart, the crown heart. It still exists, that cafe. It still has got the same name. And the cafe has got a little logo which is a heart which is pierced with an arrow quite a symbolic time because what's going to happen here when he's in the street he's going to be murdered a, a tall red-haired man jump on the carriage and start hitting the king with his knife and the king he's going to receive that finally the soldiers stop the king then he can the carriage carrying the way to the to, to go back to the Louvre, sorry, and in the Louvre, the, the king is going to die. You see, they try to they arrest the man, and the king is really badly injured, and they bring him to the Louvre. Yeah, I did it. And you've got here a plaque to say, in it is in that place that the king Henry the Fourth has been murdered by Ravaillac. Ravaillac is going to be questioned. Ravaillac is going to be accused. Ravaillac is going to admit, I did it on my own will. End of the story. Ravaillac is the murder of the king. So here we've got two stories which are completely finished. On one hand, we have got the natural death of Mary of um, Gabriel Destré. On the second hand, we have got a man who killed the king for religious reason, who acted on his own. So there is no reason to go further. But me, as a prosecutor, I don't accept these arguments. I think behind that, there is a lady. And that lady is Mary of Medici. Why I say that? Because the question is, who benefit from the crime? So, if you think about Gabrielle Destré, if she's killed, if she's not there anymore, who benefit from that? Hmm? Who? Mary of Medici? Because Gabrielle Destré was supposed to marry the king couple of days after but if Mary of, of if Gabriel Destré is not there anymore who is going to marry the king Mary of Medici so we know the queen is hated by the people but the people are not going to kill her for that we know Marguerite de Valois doesn't like her but she's not going to be killed for that we know the king loves her so much that he wants to marry her and he already recognized the, the kids so he has no reason to kill her. We know that the Pope, the famous Pope that you think is nice Pope, uh, Pope, Pope, Clem, um, Pope Clement VII wants, um, sorry, wants that Mary of Medici to be because she's her, his, uh, his niece wants to be the future king of, of Queen of France but he's not going to kill Gabriel Destré for that. Okay? So, in fact, who is the only one who really wants to kill her? Marguerite de Valois. So, myself, I'm sure that it's uh, Marguerite de Valois, Mary of Medici. <laughs> so, myself, I'm sure it's Mary of Medici. And now, if I come back to that night, okay? If I come back to that night, the day before, remember what I said, there, here. The day before, 
she went to a dinner with a banker named Sébastien Zamet. But in fact, Sébastien Zamet, it's not his real name. He changed the name when he came to France. His real name is Zametti. Sebastiano Zametti. He's Italian. He's a friend of the Medici family. On that night, she ate an ice lemon. And the first doctor who arrived to her, she said she has got hypertension. And, and that doctor said, I'm thinking she has been poisoned. But nobody came back to that hypothesis. People said, no, 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 no. It's an eclampsy because she was pregnant. So you see, I'm sorry to say that, but I think Mary of Medici ordered the murder, asking the bunker Zametti to put poison inside the, uh, the, 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 the lemon and she killed, or she met killed, Gabrielle Destré. So I accuse her. Okay? Then, if you think about the second murder, the murder of her husband, same thing. Who benefits from the crime? So it's going to be a little bit more complicated. So let me come back on my face to explain you that, because that's going to be a little bit more complicated. First, the king of France is going to go on war. Why the king of France wants to go on war? Mm. Remember, the king of France likes the lady. Gabriel Destré is dead. He married Marie de Medici, but he has got many mistresses. And he's found of a new one. The one we saw at the beginning of the tour. Let me show you that one. Oh, here it is. I just turned my camera. He's fond of this new one. This little one. She's 15 years old. She's Charlotte de Montmorency. Mm, very nice lady. But Charlotte de Montmorency, she's not married. So the king can't have a mistress with a non-married lady. So he's going to do what the king does at that time. He's going to ask one of his friends to marry her. And then... He's not going to live with her. <laughs> okay? So it's just a false marriage. But as soon as she's married, then the king can take her for mistress. This is acceptable. So that young person who is named Henry of Condé, him, he's going to marry that young girl. That one. Marry that one. And the king said, now I can go with her. But, in fact, he doesn't accept that. And he wants to stay with his wife. The king is not happy for that. So finally, they decide to go away and to go to join that one, who is the King Rodolphe. He is a Catholic king. And they need to hide themselves in one of the cities, which is in Belgium, named Brussels. For the king, it's outrageous that his person, his friend, betray him. And moreover, he goes to the Catholic. And even the king is Catholic, you know, he's still Protestant in his heart. So he's going to start a war. He's going to send the French army to attack the Catholic. So we don't know if the reason of the king was because he wanted to get back that young lady or just because he used the excuse of that young lady to attack the Catholic, but the idea was to go there. But his minister, the Duke of Epenon, this one, he wasn't in favor of that. Not at all. He didn't want that France go on a war versus the Catholic. He is a Catholic. He thinks it's a bad idea. He doesn't agree at all with that. He tried to convince the king, don't go at war. It's not a good idea. But the king said, no, 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 no. I want to go at war and I will take back my young mistress. The Duke of Epenon is really, really annoyed by that. But, well, he could have decided, you know, not to do it. I mean, not to, to accept it by killing the king. That could have been possible. 
Pat is too much in favor of the king, too much respectful of the crown to do it. He's already have served Henry III before, and he's going to serve at, after that Louis XIII. So he's really a straight political man. He doesn't want to do that. So who else could have done that? Because Henry IV has a lot of enemy. And Ravaillac, who is a Catholic, of course, he could have been for sure against the king. That's what we say. But who is going to tell him where the king is going to go out that day? How does Ravaillac know that the king is going to go out of the Louvre that day? How he's going to take this road? How does he know that? Who knows the trip of the king? Her. Mary of Medici. Mary of Medici knew the trip of the king. And what happened? Since they are married, Mary and the king Henry IV, since they are married, the king hasn't recognized her as the regent of France in case he died. It means if the king die, Mary of Medici is nothing. And it's a Duke of Epernon who is going to be in charge of France. But the day before he dies, the exact day before he dies, he finally decides to recognize Mary of Medici as future king of Queen of France. Finally. That's very strange, no? That the next day he recognizes her as Queen of France, that he dies. And that's very strange that Ravaillac knew the trip of the king. But not only that, the queen was very close from the Duke of Epenon. And that's very strange, my friends. But the Duke of Epenon, you know where it's come from? He comes from Angoulême, the same city as Ravaillac. And when Ravaillac came to Paris to kill the king, he lived in the house of Henriette. Henriette was a mistress of the king and a friend of the Duke of Epenon and a lady of Mary of Medici. And Ravaillac stayed in her place. Okay, okay, okay. That's a lot. But that's not all. Because there is a man who is named the, uh, the chief of the police of a city in France named Pithivier. And that chief of police, before the king died, announced arriving to the Louvre, the king is dead. He said, the king is dead when the king is not dead. That man who was close from Mary de Medici on the Duke of Epernon, he's going to be found hanged <laughs> the day after. He committed suicide. Very good. And in the coach, who was sitting next to the king? The Duke of Epernon. Yes. And the Duke of Epernon, when the man arrived with his knife, you know, like that, to kill the king. What the Duke of Epernon should have done? The Duke of Epernon should have jumped on the king to protect his king. But the Duke of Epernon did nothing. He did nothing. He just looked at him. Oh, he's going to jump on the king. Oh, he has got a knife. Oh, he's going to kill the king. So myself, I accuse Mary of Medici to have pled the Duke of Epernon, Rava, and Henriette, and all together they have planned the murder of the King of France. So I accuse Mary of Medici to have murdered Gabriel Destre to become Queen of France, and I accuse Mary of Medici to have committed the, uh, I mean, to have organized the murder of her husband, Henry the Fourth. This is what I think myself. So if I think that, now, my friends, I let you decide. And for let you decide, I come here, should be here, somewhere here. Let me find where it is.
here it is <laughs> so here <laughs> so now you are going to decide guilty or not guilty life or death i propose you give me your idea you can think about it and tell me in another tour guilty guilty three guilty that's not good for mary four guilty that's not good for mary we are 30 so we're going to see how, how many are going to vote five guilty six guilty that doesn't sound good for mary seven guilty seven eight guilty it's already 25 percent nine 10, 11, 12. Ooh, we are nearly already 50% of the audience which are voting guilty. So for instance, we've got 12 guilty and 22 who doesn't pronounce. 13 guilty, 14 guilty, 14 guilty, 20 who hasn't said and 14 who said guilty we don't have a perfect majority yet we need to wait five minutes more <laughs> we need three more votes to make a perfect majority we are just 14 guilty 14 15 guilty two more and we can behead her two more <laughs> So, my friends, <laughs> I just tried to make for the first time a trial like that, okay? So, it was a little bit uh, not perfect. I think I have to adapt it. I think I have to remake some some intel and change a little bit. Is she? She hasn't been condemned, no. She becomes Queen of France. And uh, Ravayak has been murdered. I mean, has been condemned to death. And she lived and died calmly, Okay. No. So I just say that all the archive of that has disappeared. Mm, very strange, no? So I have to, 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 to try to improve it. And I'm going to make some of the trail like that, okay? Of course, I'm going to remake the one on, of Marie Antoinette. That will be my next one. And I think I will redo that one a little bit. Very guilty. <laughs> so thank you, my friends. <laughs> Thank you. Suspicious. <laughs> Very suspicious. You know, I mean, we can't, we can't be 100% sure. Uh, we can't be 100% sure because a uh, lot of proofs have disappeared. Mm, and there is so many complications between the Catholic, the Protestant, the Pope, the mistress, uh, the lover. Uh, pfft, it's so complicated. But you think everything turns around her so in french we say there is no fire there is no fire without smoke so i'm going to keep that in my head and to say i go with you and we say guilty and the reader of our trial has decided her no more life <laughs> Thank you, Deidre. Ah, it's not perfect, okay? It's not perfect. I know that. But uh, I will try to do better for the next time because I'm going to try to, to, to arrange it a little bit more and, you know, to remake it. Anyway, if you enjoy, don't forget that you can scan that QR code chick, 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 with your phone right now on that. Bye-bye, Nathalie. And you can, give, you can leave a review on that, okay? Don't forget that. That's really, really interesting. And uh, you also can leave a tip on it, of course. So thank you so much to have me with me tonight. Uh, I have got uh, another tour uh, next week, I think. Yes. And we will go to on the path of uh, we will go on the path of Hemingway and the path of Jem Joyce in the district of the Contrescarpe that I like a lot. So thank you so much to have me with me tonight. It was a real pleasure. And uh, uh, where or oh, where we can leave tip, please. Oh, Ruth, uh, if you 
come back on that if you can scan it or buy me a coffee or PayPal. Or if you go to the YouTube, you will find in my YouTube channel, there is a link where you find the buy me a coffee on PayPal. Yeah, I will do some more, but it's a long time to prepare, but I will do some more. My pleasure, Ruth. Thank you so much, everybody. Take a great care of yourself. Oh, and by the way, yesterday, yesterday, here in Paris, I was in the cafe with my cousin, with my daughter, with my son, and we supported the team of Paris, and Paris won and qualified for the semi-final of the European League. Very proud of that. <laughs> Thank you so much. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye-bye.